Why do pilots crash? Hi, I'm Greg, and this is the channel where you can fly. I've been paragliding since 1992. I've been an instructor for years, trained tandem pilots, run SIV courses, flown World Cups and the x -Pire, and done hundreds of cross-country flights all over the world. I can't get enough of this amazing sport, but it has its dark side. Today, I'm launching a new series about flight safety. In this episode, you'll learn about the most common causes of paragliding accidents. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing and tap that bell for notification of new videos. If you want new videos to come out faster, get behind the channel on flywithgreg.com. Accidents are unexpected, yet year after year they keep on happening. Pilots make the same mistakes again and again. You and I are birds of a feather. We both fly, so you're precious to me. That's why I'm making this series. I don't want you to be smashed up. It's totally unacceptable. Why does this happen? We are human, so we make mistakes. We're flying an aircraft, so if it stops flying, we fall, and we can't see the wind, so it can surprise us. Incidents spill onto YouTube, which can be a disaster. Don't watch that scary stuff. It erodes your confidence because you can never see the whole picture and it doesn't come with a clear explanation and a solution. Most incidents are poorly analyzed. Very few experts can identify what's really going on, and the pilot can often not recognize their own mistake. That's why they made the mistake in the first place. Let's rather study the principles properly with clear action points so you can remove this glaring risk from your flying equation. What's the number one cause of paragliding accidents? It's not what you think. I analyzed the BHPA incident analysis, which is representative of a typical outcome. To make it more palatable for you, I've turned it into this useful diagram. So these are the most common causes of paragliding accidents. The truth is, you can't really divide them up in this way, which is why I take my numbers with a pinch of salt. Hmm, that's better. These elements come from the same box. They're all made from the same dough. They're all connected. Sight and weather risk causes turbulent conditions that test glider control. It's a complex interconnected web of factors that keeps catching pilots out because of the other factor. The most common cause of paragliding accidents is surprise. It's what you do when presented with the unexpected that causes the accident. I was doing fine just registering when the guy suddenly turned into me. Ah! And then I was kiting the wing on launch and it was fine when suddenly a gust picked uh, me up. And then... Are you coming to dinner? It's what you do when presented with the unexpected that causes the accident. If you prepared for it, it wouldn't catch you out because you would already know what to do in that situation. That's what the series is about. We'll go through all those common accidents that keep on happening, and I'll teach you routine responses and safety strategies. So how do you prepare for the unexpected? Well, a good place to start is to pop over to the BHPA incident reporting website. You might have something similar for your own association. Consider the first 10 incidents that you see there and how you would avoid them. Let's pick one as an example. 
So here we've got a pilot who was doing ground control, kiting the wing up the slope, and he got lifted, swung around, crashed into the slope. Unlucky. He wasn't expecting that. But now that you've seen it, what would you do? So what's a good strategy to avoid getting plucked off the ground, swung around, and smacked back into the slope? Firstly, kiting on an area that is a launchable slope is risky. There's the danger that you're going to fly off it. So you maybe want to restrict your kiting activities to flat or slightly sloping areas. That's good to think of. And secondly, I would only want to be kiting the wing up a slope if I'm confident that I can kill the wing. So the first thing to practice is killing the wing while kiting it. And this you can do on a gentle slope and then increase the slope. The key is the back rises. If you're kiting up a slope and you're using the back and the front rises to let the glider pull you up, you've got that control, the kill switch in your hand that you can pull in. It's not as easy as that. In strong winds and in gusts, that can be quite a lot of force. So practice. Make sure you understand the power in your wing and how much you need to control it. And if you think it's going to get away from you, you're not going to be kiting up a slope in those sort of conditions. But that's one way to prepare for an example, which maybe you haven't experienced yet, but now it's not going to surprise you because you've prepared for it. You've thought it through, and maybe you've got to go off and go and do some practice on killing the wing on a slope. Good for you. You're now prepared for one of those incidents. My task to you, go through the rest of the 10 that you find the first 10 and go through that mental process of preparing yourself for that incident and establishing what would you do, what is a safe procedure and how are you going to respond so that when it happens, it's not a big surprise. So when that is done, you know how to use preparation to combat that glaring risk. If you want to elevate your education, join me on flywithgreg.com and I'll help you fly further, higher, and safer. I'm currently offering a free trial. So sign up and check out how to avoid an accident, which will give you a very good framework for managing risk during your flying, while it's still available for free. Have you ever had an accident? What would you like to talk about? Tell me below, and I might make an episode about it. I'll see you next time when we'll talk about how risky is it really? Until then, fly safely. Cool.